So welcome to another virtual career conversation uh, here at Franklin Pierce University uh, Career Development Center, the Lloyd and Helen Ament Astman Career Development Center. And today we have a very special guest and I'm really excited um, he's agreed to participate. His name is Mr. Will Stewart and he's the director at Stay Work Play New Hampshire. Welcome, Will. Thank you very much. Good to be here, Pierre. <laughs> good, good. I, I'm really glad that you came because as I was telling you um, earlier, um, I hear a lot from our students that say, oh, wow, I really love New Hampshire. I really love the area. I've done some good things, uh, and yet they don't stay. So I wanted you to come on to talk, first of all, about the work that Stay, Work, Play New Hampshire does uh, and uh, talk about the different programs that you have available uh, as well. Go right ahead. Sure. So Stay Work Play is a statewide nonprofit, and our mission is to attract and retain more young people here in the Granite State. And, uh, you know, it is a pretty big issue here from a demographic standpoint. We are the second oldest state uh, in the country, uh, New Hampshire is. Uh, any idea what the first oldest state is? I'll quiz for you. Uh, either Maine or, or Rhode Vermont. You're right on the money. Yeah, Maine is number one, and uh, we're actually tied with Vermont for number two. So uh, you nailed it. A lot of people, when I ask that question, they say Florida, and uh, which you might think, you know, you know, retirement central, right? But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a Northern New England issue. So uh, you know, we, we have kind of a kind of a triple whammy here in New Hampshire. Not only are we the second oldest state in the country by average age, we have you know, at least pre-COVID, and I would suspect it's, you know, nothing much has changed, you know, relatively speaking, uh, one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country, you know, here in New Hampshire. Uh, and then finally, we are the number one, not a good number one, but we're number one in uh, the percentage of high school graduates that we export out of state to attend a four-year university. So high school graduates who want to go on and get a bachelor's degree, 61%, nearly two out of three, leave the state to go pursue that uh, degree. Now, some of them come back, but a lot of them don't. So, you know, we're in kind of this, it's kind of this perfect storm of, uh, of demographic challenge that we're in. And really that's uh, gonna, it's starting to play itself out now. And unless, you know, we do more in the coming years, you know, it's really gonna get worse from, a, from an economic standpoint. And uh, I would say from a civic life standpoint too, because if we don't have the people that we need here coming, coming up in the ranks, you know, as we're starting to see now, the baby boomers are retiring. Uh, who's going to step up and, you know, fill these roles? Um, you know, not just entry level, but, uh, you know, moving on up that progression in careers, too. So it's a, uh, it's a big challenge. And not just jobs, you know, it's, it's community stuff, too. Who's going to serve as the, you know, the president of the Rotary Club? And, you know, who's going to serve on the planning board, you know, for their local town? You know, who's going to be the deacon at church? I mean, we need people uh, of all uh, you know, ages, but uh, young people in particular. So that's that's why Stay Work Plays, uh, that's why we exist and why we've been around for 11 years now. Wow, I mean, it sounds like uh, there, there are, are some uh, very, very structural, structural uh, issues uh, with, with uh, the demographics, the demographics here, here in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Uh, uh, talk to talk me to about, about a little bit about what are some of those, those issues? issues? Like, why, why haven't, haven't we been able to keep, keep college college students uh, within the state, as well as maybe entice other people here as well. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a very complex, you know, and complicated issue. You know, there's, there's no, you know, one, two, or even three reasons. I think, you know, a lot of them are, you know, interrelated, you know, to a certain extent. But, uh, you know, Say Word Play, we actually did some, uh, did some research on this. We commissioned a survey a few years ago looking at, uh, we wanted to get some, you know, some data, you know, on why young people stay in New Hampshire and why they might leave. Because um, we're a pretty small organization. We have three full-time staff, you know, a budget of about $200,000. So to say we're under-resourced for the challenge that we're addressing is, is an understatement. So we wanted to make sure that what we're doing matters. Uh, and for that, we needed data. So a lot of the things that we learned you know, didn't really surprise us. We, we'd heard them anecdotally, and I'm sure not, from, not unfamiliar to you. You probably hear them, you know, as do uh, students, you know, at the university and others. Uh, first and foremost, New Hampshire is an expensive place. It's an expensive place to live. Um, you know, from a housing standpoint, it's an expensive place to go to school. Um, you know, New Hampshire, we're number 50 
in the amount per capita that the state government invests in the local college and university system, you know, dead last. Uh, so, you know, it's no wonder that uh, UNH, as great a school as it is, is the, the most expensive public university in the country. Um, you know, so when you ask why do, why do you know, high school graduates leave, you know, to, to go to college elsewhere, well, it's cheaper uh, in, in a lot of cases. A lot of, you know, these kids would love to stay, but they just can't afford to, um, especially as the, you know, the price of college, you know, increases everywhere. And it's, you know, people are looking at, you know, what's the, how am I going to pay off this debt that I'm accumulating? Um, so those are big questions, especially on the, the younger end of the scale. Um, you know, it come, you know, some of the other things we heard about uh, that, you know, on the kind of the con side, why people leave or maybe why they don't come, um, you know, everything ranging from, you know, a lack of available and affordable childcare, you know, here in the state, uh, a lack of nightlife and entertainment options. Um, uh, perceived, and a lot of these, some of these are perceived and some of them are real. Um, you know, they mentioned uh, you know, a lack of uh, arts and cultural opportunities. I think that's more of a perception because there is uh, a lot of that going on here. Um, and then you know, they mentioned uh, a lack of cultural diversity too. Um, so you have you know, a lot of these things that we hear all the time anecdotally for people about you know, why they might leave or not come. You know, just kind of the reputation that New Hampshire has outside of the state for people who haven't lived here. Uh, probably the, the biggest surprise that we heard, though, at least it was for me, and I think a lot of people who heard this, uh, was what we've termed the loneliness factor. That uh, one out of five respondents, and these were people between the ages of 20 and 40 living in New Hampshire, they said one out of five said they didn't have a single friend uh, nearby or kind of in close proximity to them. Now, you know, that's pretty sad on a, on a, like an individual personal level, right? You know, I mean, you don't have any friends. Um, but like even from a workforce retention standpoint, it's very concerning because like if you don't have friends, then your job is probably just a job. And right. And if you get another one that you know, elsewhere that you know, offers you more money or advances your career or takes you back to wherever your friends and family are or a place where you think you can make friends, I think you're that much more likely to go. So you know, we recognize pretty quickly that uh, you know, we need to get a way to we need to figure out a way to connect you know, young people. Uh, here in New Hampshire to each other, you know, to their communities and, and so forth, to get them to, to kind of put down roots here. Wow, that's really eye-opening, uh, actually. I, I, the loneliness factor, I, I do remember speaking with you about that when you and I first uh, met and that first talk. And it, every time you, I hear it again, it's, it's, it is shocking. Um, I think that, Matt, before we go on, talk to me about what are some of the reasons why people do move here or what are some of the more attractive reasons uh, for people to consider uh, staying here after college or moving in here uh, long after college? Sure, and there, there are a lot of reasons for that too. I don't mean to paint a, uh, you know, a doom and gloom picture and have everybody you know, running for the nearest border. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons that people you know, both stay here and come here from elsewhere. Uh, in fact, you know, New Hampshire is uh, in the Northeast. You know, we have the, uh, the most population gain of those in their 20s and 30s in recent years. And we're one of only 10 states in the country uh, in recent years that has been attracting, that has been gaining more under 40, um, individuals than losing them. So, you know, there are some good things going on. I mean, we need a lot more, but it's, it's definitely a good trend. So why? Um, according to our survey and our data, you know, the number one reason is kind of, and there are multiple kind of sub reasons within this, but it's basically everything the outdoors. Um, again, maybe not a big surprise. I mean, I mean, look out your window. It's, it's a nice place, you know, mountains, lakes, you know, seacoast, you know, whether you like to ski or hike or swim or boat, you know, fish, you know, whatever your thing is, you can, if it's outdoor related, you can probably do it here in New Hampshire. So, you know, that's, uh, so encompassed within that is, you know, everything from the environment itself, you know, very clean, um, you know, good air quality, et cetera, um, you know, good clean water, all of that, not to be discounted, um, but also proximity, you know, to parks, you know, both, you know, state parks, local parks, um, and really everything in the, the variety, you know, of the act, outdoor activities that, that one can do here too, you know, all scored, you know, almost off the charts, you know, on, uh, in our survey. Uh, so beyond the outdoors, you know, respondents also mentioned um, basically, this being a, a great place to raise a family. Uh, they mentioned, you know, our communities uh, looking at, 
pretty much any national crime data. You were one of the safest states in the country. You have very low crime rates. Uh, we have some of the best schools here, both K-12 you know, and higher ed, um, you know, as reasons to, uh, to come and stay. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, you kind of put all of these things together and it, you know, it paints you know, a very good picture. But again, it's, you know, we can't, you know, one of the challenges is that not everything appeals or turns off everybody. So it's, it's a very individual conversation. Uh, and one of the things we, we saw too, we kind of looked at data, you know, over, the, over that span of time. Like I mentioned, we, we surveyed 20 to 40 year olds. So what's important to a 20 year old it's very different sometimes what's your priority in life than what you are when you're 35 or 40. You know, so, you know, as you might expect, again, no big surprise here, you know, those in their early 20s, you know, were one of the ones to say that, you know, the big reasons to leave was lack of nightlife and entertainment options, for example. You know, they, you know, weren't so hot, you know, like local schools, K-12 schools wasn't a big concern for them. You know, however, when you started getting to that, you know, early 30s, late 20s, early 30s stage, when you start thinking about things like, hey, where am I, where might I settle down? And, you know, where do I want to raise my family and send my kids to school? You know, then those things start becoming a lot more important and you really start scoring. So we definitely saw that satisfaction with life in New Hampshire increases with age. So less so on the early 20s, but by the mid to late 30s, man, we are, again, off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I will, I will say uh, that we are close enough, actually, to nightlife. I mean, we're an hour away from Boston, right? And so we are not far from Provincetown. Uh, we're a hop, skip, and a jump um, from, uh, you know, Manchester or, or any of the other, uh, uh, Burlington, uh, not Burlington, uh, Brattleboro, uh, Vermont, has a lot of uh, really cool stuff there, too. But I do understand, uh, I, when I was in my 20s, I was living in, the, in Manhattan on Avenue A in Houston and loving it. I don't think I could ever do that again at this age, right? So uh, I understand that. Now I want to turn back to one of the sort of cons, the big con that shocked both you and I, uh, was the loneliness factor. So one of the things that we try to do here at Franklin Pierce University and in our career development and in uh, pretty much everything that we do is really involve the community. And the reason for that is because if you can establish relationships, um, you, the loneliness factor will be mitigated, right? Uh, and so whether that be job shadows, whether that be um, some, of, uh, some of the events that you actually uh, put on, the community events, um, uh, it's really important that students and people who are already here know about them and become engaged in them. So that being said, what are some of the events or community uh, um, activities that you all uh, either know about or sponsor or would encourage a, a student to uh, consider? Sure. You know, I'd say first, you know, start with your, whatever your interests and where your passions lie and, uh, you know, find a way to get connected in that area and, you know, work on it. I would say to look at it in different areas of your life, you know, so, you know, from a personal perspective, you know, what, what interests you personally, what's your, what's your passion, you know, is it, you know, hiking? Is it skiing? Is it, you know, addressing a social issue? And find groups around those that are, you know, either doing stuff in that sphere or working in, on things in that sphere and get involved. You know, it's a great way and you, you know, a lot of people, you know, we worry about, you talk about like, well, I, I hate like networking, you know. I mean, I get it. Yeah, you know, me too. I'm like, a, I mentioned to you earlier, I'm kind of an introvert, you know, having like meaningless chit chat with people about the weather or something or the Red Sox, you know, it's just not my thing. Um, but like, I'm a bicyclist. So like, if you were to say for me, for example, you know, if I were new in an area, you know, I would lo look for the local bicycle group. And uh, for me, if you were to say, hey, this group meets at uh, six o'clock, you know, every Tuesday night at town hall and we go for a five mile bike ride. Well, now we're talking because I know I'm automatically going to have something that, that of interest to me that'll be of interest to the other people that we can talk about. And then kind of friendships and connections go from there. So that would be my advice, you know, from a you know, a personal standpoint. Uh, from a professional standpoint, you mentioned internships, which are, you know, a, a great, great uh, tool and something that we're are very heavy, uh, heavily pushing here at Stay, Work, Play. Because, you know, we've seen data from the College and University Council and, and both UNH too that says that, you know, if a student has an internship in New Hampshire, they're 12 times as likely to stay here in the state post-graduation as somebody who doesn't because they are making those connections, you know, both professionally and personally. And, you know, maybe it turns into a job, maybe it doesn't. But even if it doesn't, again, they're, they're making friends, you know, they're 
you know, with their coworkers, they're getting folks who might be able to give them, you know, a letter of recommendation or some advice, you know, to advance their career who might look out for them and say, well, we don't have a position for you here, but I have a friend in the same industry over here who's looking for somebody. And you really be able to make those, again, connections. Um, I would say too that, uh, you know, even post-graduation, you know, one of the biggest uh, pieces of advice I give young people here in New Hampshire is get connected with your local young professionals network. Um, you know, there are more than a dozen, I think 14, 15 of these across the state that are geographically based. Um, you know, so like there's one, you know, for the Monadnock region, the Keene Young Professionals Network or the Upper Valley Young Professionals. You know, there's one in the Lakes region, one in the Lake Sunapee region, you know, one in Concord, you know, Manchester, Nashua, Seaco, so forth. You know, these are great opportunities to get involved and meet uh, and meet other young people you know, on kind of a social basis, but there's always a little bit of a you know, professional, you know, bent too. usually some education or something like that. So great opportunities uh, to meet. And then a lot of industries and even companies, some of the larger companies will have their own groups for young professionals too. So I know like the banker, there's like a New Hampshire Young Bankers Association, for example, um, you know, where you can meet and network with others in your, in your professional sphere as well. So there are a lot of opportunities to get involved and that's not even counting a lot of like the, the volunteer efforts and, you know, volunteering civically for your town or something. So there are so many opportunities, but I think uh, a lot of folks are, are hesitant. Um, you know, they think they need to be invited to get uh, involved, but uh, I guarantee you, people are just, you know, waiting. I wish people would do a better job of inviting newcomers, but I guarantee you, if you go to any of these things, people are going to be so glad that you're there. So, you know, this is, a lot of this stuff is, uh, they can get access to it uh, from your website. So what is your website? It is stayworkplay.org. Is that all one word? It is, yes. Any capital letters? Nope, all lowercase, stayworkplay.org. We're also uh, on all uh, social media channels as well. Excellent, excellent. So as we talk about, uh, as we talk about sort of, you know, relationships, talk to me about your relationship with the state of, of New Hampshire. Are you a native? I'm not, I'm a transplant, uh, actually. Where from? Yep, I moved up from Tennessee. Uh, a little over 15 years ago and uh, to like a lot of people to take a job uh, I was in journalism at the time and um, you know back this was you know <clears throat> I just turned 41 so back then I was you know mid-20s and you know didn't have um, you know didn't have, have any you know debt or property or anything like that so it was time I could make a leap and you know ended up coming to New Hampshire to take a job at a paper called the Hippo kind of an alt weekly paper in Manchester and uh, long since moved on from journalism, but uh, I've remained here in New Hampshire. You know, it's been a place, and this is something that we really push here at Stay Work Play too, is that it, it really is a place of opportunity where you can make a difference. And I think that's what, you know, really attracted me initially and keeps me here. You know, I went from journalism, then I went into community organizing, for like an affordable housing neighborhood revitalization nonprofit. I went and did economic development work for a couple of chambers of commerce and then you know, came here to stay work play and you know, all the while you know, was able to, to do things that, uh, that interest me and to, you know, to make a difference in my community. I live in Manchester and uh, for example I was able to help start, I mentioned bicycles that I like bike stuff, I was able to start a group called Bike Manchester that does bicycle advocacy. Uh, which is you know, still in existence and uh, I've passed the baton on that one. Um, you know, I, a few years ago, ran for alderman, you know, here in the, in the city and was elected and re-elected last year. So, you know, I was able to move here and in a relatively short amount of time, start making a difference. And that's not something that you can do a lot of other places, especially bigger places. Um, so here, you know, one of the things we really push, and again, is a way to make connections too, but to make a difference. And I think that's, you're really appealing. Again, you know, data you know, show that, you know, for young people more than any other generation alive today is that it, they like that ability to make a difference both in their personal and professional lives. So and I would argue there's no better place that you can do that than New Hampshire. Certainly, I, I can't think of many places where you can do it, you know, easier, faster, and cheaper. And uh, you don't have to live here for, you don't have to be born here. Your grandfather doesn't have to be born here to make a difference. You can jump right in. And, you know, I say, like, even if not as an individual, if you can get two other people to help you, man, you can probably take over the state. It's, uh, it's, it's so good. I am so glad that you uh, gave us an insight into sort of your life uh, here in New Hampshire. And I, I wanna really stick a pin in something that you've said, which I think you might wanna consider to be the next Stay Work Play sort of uh, logo or tagline. And, sure. this, and that's that this place is truly a place where you can make a difference. Uh, I feel that daily when I'm here. 
Uh, and I will say to you that, uh, you know, there aren't, uh, there isn't a large contingency of people of color in New Hampshire. And if I could just say to anyone of color, uh, uh, if you want to uh, a place where people are genuinely, not everyone, but for the most part are genuinely down to earth, good people uh, who, who are pretty open-minded and accepting uh, and who will get out and, and roll up their sleeves uh, to help uh, their neighbor, New Hampshire is the place to be. And I actually uh, mean that. I, I've met very good people. But even beyond that, I think that if a person or a, a young person or an older person for that matter, really have some strong um, uh, feelings about community engagement, community involvement, making this world a better place, making your neighborhood a better place. I'm gonna tell you, I've never met such passionate people as I've met, and I live in Keene, uh, as I've met in Keene, uh, as well as here uh, in the university. So you're absolutely right. I think you need to consider that. For your next tagline, uh, New Hampshire is the place where you can make a difference. All right? I like it. <laughs> okay. Trademark it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have it on film. So uh, <laughs> before I let you go, I wanted to uh, find out if, if there's anything that we haven't brought up that you'd like to comment on. And the second part is, what advice would you give um, specifically uh, college students who are about to graduate or who have just uh, graduated, what advice would you give them about pursuing their careers or interviewing or connecting, whatever it is about their careers? What advice would you have for them? I would say, you know, don't, you know, consider, and this, you know, I'll, I'll, I will use my own life as an example. I like to say that I've never been qualified for any job I've ever had. Um, you know, I got into journalism, you know, I didn't study journalism in college. You know, I went to community organizing. There is no community organizing, you know, degree. Then um, I went to economic development, had no experience, practical experience in that to speak of, and stay work, play. That's, you know, like talent attraction retention. Not really. Um, you know, so I would say to not just consider, you know, as you're looking at your career, you know, A, you know, expect, and you've probably seen this, you know, to, to change jobs, certainly, and, and even careers in your lifetime, just because you're one thing now or studying one thing doesn't mean you're locked into that for life. So don't, you know, don't freak out. It's like, oh, geez, I have to be an engineer forever. You know, you don't. I, uh, I, was, I learned of a guy yesterday. He, was, uh, he just became the director of a library in, in a town in southern New Hampshire after being a lawyer for a while. So, I mean, you could have these, you know, drastic career changes sometimes. And don't be afraid of that and expect it. And to me, that's exciting. You know, also, I would say that, uh, you know, don't think that, you know, every, your career growth and, you know, whether it's skill development or anything else just happens in your job or as part of your job. You know, I credit, you know, a lot of, you know, my being able to, to move from industry and industry and sphere to sphere of, you know, skills and, you know, connections that I've, you know, learned and made, you know, in a lot of my extracurricular activities, you know, whether it was, you know, starting the bike group or, you know, like websites that I've started and, you know, just all these things, you know, you, you could hone these skills and meet these people. And, you know, it's really being able to tell the story and connect dots, you know, so it's like, you know, a lot of people, you know, and I've seen this, I, I read this before and I, I've seen it now, you know, when it comes to resumes, you know, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, well, if it does, if it's, if I can't put it on my resume, it's, it's worthless. And I would argue that that's not true. And, you know, the cover letter is so important uh, for being able to tell the story and to, to frame everything, you know, but, you know, it's one of these things like, you know, I've, you know, hired some people in my time and, you know, resumes, often, and this is just me talking, you know, resumes can often be a reason not to hire somebody, um, you know, because if people are just looking at, it, especially like the computer algorithms, if you submit stuff online, you know, they look for keywords and if it's not there, next. And I've been guilty of it myself. And I know that I've probably missed great people, you know, because I'm, you know, their cover letter wasn't great or I couldn't make the connection of why they would be a good fit for this job. But I think one of the things that at least personally that I've excelled in is being able to, to tell that story. And, you know, first in a cover letter and then, you know, that at least that's enough to get me an interview. Then I can tell the story in person and be able to weave and, oh, well, I learned this skill. And it might have even been a job, like, for example, on the community organizing thing. You know, I was able to say, well, no, I've never been a community organizer, uh, you know, but as a newspaper reporter, I was used to going up and talking to people, you know, kind of sight unseen. They didn't know me. I had to be willing to just kind of jump right in and couldn't be too shy. And you're just knock on a door and you don't know who's going to be on the other side of that door and if they're going to want to talk to you or not. 
Um, so really being able to like show those transferable skills, uh, no matter how you acquire them, whether in the professional sphere, the personal sphere, uh, or anything else in between. I am coming to your next career development class. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. I couldn't have said it better, my friend. Listen, I'm going to have to get you, uh, we are planning on going on ground uh, in the fall. Uh, and depending on how things work out, maybe in the spring, I'd certainly like uh, to get you or, or some of your folks down here to talk to our students, and maybe we can send our folks up there uh, to sort of spend uh, two hours with you all, just to see what it's like to uh, work for the organization. Uh, would that be a possibility? Something to think about? That's great. Yeah, love to. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, listen, I, I, I just want to say thank you because, uh, well, this is uh, really, we've been trying to do this for the last, I think, two weeks uh, and our <laughs> schedules uh, would not permit, but I, it's really important that our students, uh, our alumni, and whoever is watching this to know that New Hampshire has a lot to offer. Uh, it has a lot to uh, also um, uh, give uh, an opportunity for someone to give back uh, here in New Hampshire. So, uh, Will, thank you so much. Let's definitely keep in touch. I will contact you uh, probably in the next week, uh, and um, we'll get this together so we can have some plans for the fall. Fair enough? Sounds good. And uh, hey, Pierre, can I, can I amend your tagline a little bit? I'm thinking about it in my head. <laughs> sure. Okay. New Hampshire, make a difference, make a life. Woo! <laughs> All right, we got to get a lawyer. We have to make sure that that's incorporated or whatever you have to do. Right. <laughs> I love yeah. it, brother. We're, uh, like you said, we have the video evidence right here that we can. <laughs> Listen, Will, thank you so much. And uh, we'll definitely be in contact, my friend, okay? Sounds like a plan. All right, take care. Hey, you too. Bye bye.